Well, good morning. Today is May 4th, 2020. This is the next video in the series of the Western Watchmen, Return of the Word of God, and we're talking more about darkness. Now, it doesn't do me any pleasure to go ahead and talk about darkness in this country because as we've gone through this coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, whatever you wish to call it, it has become darker in this country, and, and the progression continues to go in the wrong direction each and every day. Anyway, I would like to, first of all, tell you what the topic is. It's called Return of the Word of God, Darkness, and Sudden Destruction on America. But first of all, let's go ahead and consider some verses from the Word of God that we've considered for many weeks now. We're going to continue them because they are so important in, in setting the stage for this entire situation that America is going through and about to go through very soon. John chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And as the days go by, the deeds are getting more and more evil. We are now seeing our liberties on the evening news, nightly, being taken from us by law enforcement, by politicians, especially those on the left, the left-wing politicians, those that call themselves Democrats. I don't think I'd even want to call them that. It's probably something worse you can mention, but I will not mention it here. But our liberties in this country are being taken away from us from before our very eyes on the evening news, or as some people would call it, the evening snooze. Also, from the Word of God, we need to consider these, again, from Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 22. Please open your Bibles and have them turned, have your page turned to Romans chapter 1, verse 18. This is serious, folks. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And again, the wise fools are running America right now into the ground. And I'm not including the President of the United States in that when I make that statement. The President has done, an, uh, I think, a, a very workmanlike job in terms of trying to get this coronavirus issue under control. But the further we go into this thing, the further we realize how political it has become, and how this will be one major factor in the oncoming, upcoming destruction of the United States of America. Let's also read uh, Luke, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. Verses 10 through 11, we've read these before. Because these are the times that we are in. As Jesus said in Matthew 24, 80, he says, These are the beginning of sorrows. He said, The end is not yet, but the, the sorrows are, are coming and are here right now. The beginning of sorrows. Verse 10, chapter 21 of Luke. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall be from the heaven. That sounds pretty bad all by itself, and that's not even the tribulation. Tribulation comes later. With all of its devastation, all of its... its, its, its uh, judgments of wrath not only upon the planet but upon the people that are in it because they rejected the knowledge of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the title of today's verse, or not the verse, excuse me, the, the title of today's message is not about life and godliness, although that's included. It is about the sudden destruction of America. Open your Bibles, if you will, again to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, this is a great section from the Word of God. At least part of it is, all of it is actually, but the really important part of it is involves the resurrection of the believers. We read all about the resurrection of the believers in 1 
Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 54, and even beyond. But that verse, uh, that uh, section of scripture is extremely important because that is where our blessed hope lies in the resurrection of the saints. You know, uh, to meet the Lord in the air. What a what a wonderful thought that is. But still, there are a lot of people who do not believe it. So let's consider once again, First Thessalonians chapter four, beginning with verse sixteen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. We need to consider some things here, and especially in this fifth chapter of First Thessalonians, because this is what's coming to America. You have Paul says, You have no need that I write unto you. So Paul says, We already know this stuff. You know, you've already heard it from me, uh, and we've talked about it many times in fellowship. Uh, concerning the times in which we live, we are in the end times, and right now in the good old USA, we are in the end of the end times. In verse 2, Paul says that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In other words, it's going to come suddenly. One moment, things seem to be as usual. The next moment, all of a sudden, millions, possibly a billion or more people are going to be missing. Gone. They're going to go in like a thief in the night. Because that's what it said in chapter 4. It said, uh, and uh, where Paul uh, wrote this, he says, Then we which are alive and remain after the dead are caught up, shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. It's going to happen instantly. Paul in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty two says, In the twinkling of an eye. How fast is the twinkling of an eye? I don't know. It's very quick. It'll be too quick for you to stop it, that's for sure especially if you're trying to hang on to the things down here. Because if I were anybody listening or watch, listening to this newsletter or watching this video right now, the last thing I'd be concerned about is what I've got down here. Because it's not going with you. You're going to be caught up. You're, you're, if you're alive at the time, your body is going to be transformed and sent to heaven as a new body, a body just like the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be transformed in the air so that we can meet him in the clouds as a sinless, spotless uh, saint as part of the Lamb of God, part of the Bride of Christ. How many times have you heard on the news, oh, we got to make everybody safe on this coronavirus? Peace and safety. That's what we read about in verse 3, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Peace and safety. Yeah, we got to make everybody safe. Uh, we cannot open businesses until everybody is safe. We cannot have people going to restaurants until everybody is safe. And by the way, you could be cited, you could be arrested, your neighbor could turn you into the authorities if you do not follow our guiding wisdom regarding safety and uh, what they call uh, distancing. Safe distancing. Social distancing. Isn't that wonderful? Sounds Orwellian, doesn't it? 1984. Social distancing. Newspeak, double think, and on and on. They got us, folks, because we have not listened to what the Lord was warning about in this book here, otherwise known as the Word of God. This book has told us these days would come. And now peace and safety has arrived. And peace and safety are not going to keep this planet safe because Paul says in God's Word that sudden destruction is going to come. Sudden. In other words... The COVID virus, when it started, there was kind of a, a introduction, a preamble of sorts. Oh, we got a virus that's starting to break out in China and so forth. And then eventually, through uh, airline travel, international travel and so forth, it spread around and uh, especially came to the Western nations, the developed nations like Western Europe and the good old USA, although it, and also the Eastern nations like Japan and Korea, South Korea especially, and the Philippines and Vietnam, and of course, eventually to Central and South America and Africa. Although I understand that Africa hasn't been hit nearly as hard as these other places have been. Why is that? Well, apparently not too many African people are welcome in China, or they just weren't there at the time when this thing broke out. And so the African nation, for the most part, has emerged in much better shape 
the continent, uh, I should say, has emerged in much better shape than the developed Western nations of Western Europe, the United States, and Japan. So we've seen a gradual ramping up of this issue of the coronavirus, how we've been told to stay indoors, how we've been told not to go to work unless you're essential. And all through this, all we hear in the news at night is, you gotta be safe, you gotta be safe. Folks, there isn't a safe place on this planet right now if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, use that famous expression, I say, hold the phone. Sun destruction is coming upon the United States of America. The Lord has put it on my heart over the last few days or weeks, or maybe since all this coming, this time this, this started, and I prepared a document I call Judgment Arrives and Coming Judgment on America, and also the nature of coming just, judgments. All it is is a simple Word document outlining some things. And if you'd like to see this, you may request a copy by simply responding to this email, or excuse me, this uh, this uh, video, or by email. I'd be happy to send you a copy. Maybe I'll send it to you anyway so you can study it in the meantime. But the important thing is, is that judgment is coming to America because the nation continues its ongoing war against God. It is thumbing its face, its nose, its, its, its personality in the face of the Lord God and saying somehow we're better than he is. Well, judgment's here, folks, and more judgment is coming. The United States is being singled out by this watchman as ripe for judgment because since the coronavirus has... Initially, there was some sort of an indication that we were starting to kind of unify a little bit get together to kind of find, uh, fight this thing on a united front. And then all of a sudden the politicians began opening up their mouths and made it political. And of course with the, the matter of people being forced to stay in their homes, people who can't go out and work for a living anymore, people who have had their First Amendment rights suspended and maybe even terminated for all we know regarding free speech, also the freedom to worship in churches. People are still not back to church in this country yet. We still have to keep six feet of distance one from another. I've heard people say, it's been months since anybody hugged me. Why is that? Because we have rejected the word of God. We have gone about it our own way. And the United States is in God's sights right now, in his gun sights, as to when the judgment or where the judgment is going to occur. Many times we have talked about um, the Feast of Trumpets. And we've mentioned that the rapture, the catching away, the, the, the resurrection of the saints could very well occur on that day. This year it occurs on September 18th. Read all about it in Leviticus chapter 23. However, and I want to keep this brief now, I'm getting a little bit too long-winded here. Regarding that day, we could still in the good old USA see some fearful judgments coming because the coronavirus and all the pandemic and everything that's gone around about it, all the lies, the distortions, uh, the shutting in, the six feet, and all this other stuff, social distancing, has not been enough to convince this nation that God means business when he says he's going to deal with sin. God deals with sin in one of two ways, either in grace, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, or in wrath, chapter 16 of Revelation. And even before then, when there are other judgments that are fearful are still coming upon the world during the tribulation. But we're not even in the tribulation yet. We're only in the beginning of sorrows. And folks, it's time to wake up and realize that God meant what he said and said what he meant when it comes to judgment on those people and those nations who refuse his offer, his free, his free gift of grace and salvation to the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, folks, salvation is a simple matter. God made it so. If he had made it complicated, nobody could be saved. Even when the rich young ruler in Matthew chapter 19 came to Jesus and said, Good master, what one good thing can I do that I can, that I can inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him after he said, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. He said, You know what you have to do, and so forth. And then he said, uh, Obey the commandments, and so forth. And then he says, All these things have I done since my youth. What, what, what lack I? And Jesus said, One thing thou lackest, you know, sell all that you have and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Pick up your cross and follow me. And he went away sad. I don't know if he went away lost, but he certainly went away sad. So the matter of salvation is simple. 
Paul said it in many in many references in the scripture. We have gone through it many times. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. The last verse of which says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When Peter was sinking during the storm, and he was walking on the water out there by Jesus, walking toward him, and he was starting to notice the waves around him being boisterous and lapping on the boat, he says, Lord, save me. That's it. You go around in some of the rescue missions in the United States, they have a little, like the one in Denver, they've got a big cross on the side of the building that says, Jesus saves. So what did Peter say? Lord, save me. He acknowledged Jesus as Lord. If you acknowledge Jesus as Lord, if you believe in your heart that he is righteous, and with your mouth confess him unto salvation, you're saved. It's simple. That's simple. So folks, don't waste any time. Don't think about it. I don't know when this judgment is coming. But I got a list of them right here. Again, you can make a request for them, and I'd be happy to send you one.